Welcome to my third installation of my video production van build. This is part three of the video series. In this video, we're gonna go over some wood treatment for the build out in the back. We're gonna go over some additions that I made to the van to help it be a little bit more functional, like a camera compartment, some overhead lighting to see all of the equipment in the dark, and we'll be going over everything that I keep in the van right now. This is the final video of the van build series. However, I may do updates on it in the future, so stay tuned. So the first thing I did here was clean out the build in the back. The wood had chipped a bit from me using it over time and there was dust and just wood shavings all over the place. So I wanted to clean it up a little bit before I started the treatment. Originally I was going to paint this and then do a layer of polyurethane over the top of it. I had also considered using some shop carpet over the top of it and I may still do that in the future. What it ended up coming down to though for this time was just three coats of polyurethane. A couple things I learned about working with polyurethane here. One, it's really sticky. It got everywhere. It got all over my hands, my arms, the broom handle I was using to paint with, and also on some of the areas that I didn't want it on in the van. So it's a little difficult to work with, but it's nothing a little bit of goo gone couldn't take care of. The second thing is it smells. Some people like the smell, some people don't like the smell. Luckily, I fall somewhere in the middle. I'm not terribly in love with it, but it isn't enough to make me gag or anything like that. It's been about two or three weeks since I painted this, and it still smells like polyurethane. And it's even gotten into the front cab of the vehicle. Eventually, over time, I think this will wear off and go away, but those are two things you should be prepared for if you do this. next thing I moved on to was overhead lighting. So the van came with one little light that is on the side of one of the walls and it didn't do a whole lot for lighting up the equipment that I had in the vehicle. So I needed a little bit more. I decided to get a cheap set of strip lighting off of the internet and I also got a like camping battery pack to run it off of. I didn't want to run it off of my car battery or tap into any vehicle power because I was worried that that might create a problem in the future because I didn't want to drain the battery of the vehicle when using this lighting. The lighting was very easy to install though. It's sticky on the bottom, so it just taped up to the top of the van very nicely and easily. And it seems like it's a very firm stick. I don't think it's going anywhere in the future. Cool thing about this lighting is that it's Bluetooth enabled so I can connect to it on my phone and change the colors if I want to. If I'm ever shooting in an environment where there's tons of bugs or something like that I can turn on a red light to keep those guys away and if I'm feeling a little happy after a shoot I can go into dance mode and change it to any color I want. So this lighting system has two ways of triggering it. One is by a switch that is attached to the plug and the other one is an infrared remote. I velcroed the remote to the back area of the van and I put up the switch near the side door. My goal with this was to have it accessible no matter which door I opened and then I realized that the battery that this lighting system is plugged into has to be turned on in order for either the remote or the switch to work. So it defeated the purpose of having those mounted in those two convenient places. Maybe I'll figure out a way to fix this in the future, but for now it serves its purpose and I'm happy with it. The final addition that I made to the van was a safe place to put my camera. When I'm on my way to a shoot, I like to already have my camera built. There can be a few things that can be added onto it when I arrive at the shoot, but for the most part, I like the base of the camera to be built. So when I get there, most of that work is already done. So what I did here, and it's working out well so far, is just to screw in a little bit of foam to the area where I want to keep the camera. This is leftover foam from Pelican cases that I didn't need, and I just cut it to the size that I needed it for. And then I just took a couple screws and some washers and drilled it into the wood base. 
In addition to the foam, I have a bungee cord that goes through the handle of my camera, and that's what stops it from moving anywhere if I have to hit the brakes suddenly. I've been using this for a while now and I haven't had any issues or any damage to my camera, so at least for me, for now, it's a good solution. Quick rundown of what's in the van here. The cool thing about having the camera here is the tripod is also here, so I can just take that out, put the camera on the sticks really quickly, and um, get a shot just by stopping on the side of the road, so I love that. Moving on here, we've got a bag of extension cords and other knickknacks. We've got the drone back here, the battery for the lights up above, and uh, I can also use that to charge camera batteries and things on the go if I have to. On the far side over here, we've got the Ergo Rig camera support, which saves me in my back, and a full-size Apple box. Moving down here, we've got the tripod, which I talked about already, some practical LED light bulbs all in daylight in case I ever need to switch those out in a home or on set for a lamp or whatever. Inside here, I've got two Aperture B7C practical bulbs, which I can do full RGBW on, dim, and they are flicker free. And then I've also got two Aperture MCs in here. Beyond this, we've got a little bungee cord here to keep these from falling out. Beyond this, I've got some more lights, practical light bulbs, and then beyond those, we have some things like Duvetine, a flex fill, and a mini flag kit. And then down here, we've got a, slide, a motorized slider for time lapses. In this little corner, I managed to put a grabber in case anything gets too far out of reach. I can use that to reach in here and grab an item that I can't reach. And then a big golf umbrella in case it rains. On this side, we already talked about the Ergo Rig and the Apple Box. Moving down here, I've got an audio kit, just two lobs and some batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries and a charger in here. Right here, I have a GoPro kit and it also has a DJI Pocket 2 for those quick little gimbal shots that I don't need to pull out the big gimbal for. And then you see on this side we have some extra space. Um, I'll fill that up eventually with something. But this is the other side of the slider and then the sticks right there. Sandbags. Sandbags here and on the other side to balance out the weight a little bit. And then we'll move to the back. Right, in the back here, there's a whole lot of good stuff happening. This big case here is camera and camera accessories for the big FX9 camera. Then moving over here is the cart with dual layer shelves that I have. And that stays down while we're driving and lifts up when we're parked to reveal this case. These two cases here are the most accessed cases. So I wanted them to be first in the back and easy to grab and open. This case here has all camera lenses and some other AKS stuff. Then moving to the side here, we've got the four Astera Titan tubes, which are just so useful on set. I use them all the time. There's also a bunch of other um, knickknacks in here for those lights. Moving back, we've got the grip case, which has also a makeup kit, a bunch of other random stuff, air blower, little AC kit, gloves, things like that, all useful. Put this back down here so you can see behind it. Here we have two falconized rollable LED RGBW flex lights. These are really cool because they take up a very little amount of space and they're two by one, so two foot by one foot, which are pretty, pretty big um, to fit in such a small case. I've got four Anton Bauer, 94 watt hour batteries in this green case here. Those are used for powering the Falcon Eye lights or used to power these two one by one light panel Astros. That's what's in this case. And then all the way in the back corner here, we have my DJI Ronin S gimbal. So moving on down here, we've got the shelves for the cart. This goes on the bottom and the top layer of the cart. And that allows me to stack two layers worth of gear on this cart. And then we've got two C-stand arms and stems here and a sand bed to hold them in. Three light stands, 
a monopod, the C-stand bases, and there's a little crappy tripod behind here. And then we've got a step ladder here to reach those hard to reach places. And sometimes I'm in a place where I need to get up higher to hang some duvetine or change a light bulb. That's what that step ladder's for. Up here in the cab in the overhead storage, there is some things like blankets, in case I need to, to get down on the floor, uh, a med kit, in case we get any cuts and bruises, some Kleenex, just auxiliary storage for useful things like that. There's also a power converter up there in case I wanna draw any more power off the 12 volt to charge things, in addition to having this battery here. And that's it. That's everything I keep in my van. That's how I built my van. Things may change as the future progresses, but right now I'm loving the setup. I think it works really well for what I need it for. And I can't wait for all the new jobs I'm gonna get to use it on. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and you're great. If you enjoyed this video series, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.